shut your mouth, Tim. Listen, 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 listen. Hang on one second. What? Keep clapping your guns, okay? Keep clapping them. Hold on. Listen to say just real quick. What they're calling you is Nacho Libre. All right, all right, all right, all right. I've heard it. I've heard it. But here's the thing. You got the villain out here, right? The villain. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Listen, here's the problem. He wants to come out here and whine and cry about who's not here, what business deals he's making. It's just a bunch of whining. He's playing the victim. He's no villain. He's no villain. I think he's got a point. Blah, 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 Don't care. I do not care. Listen, I came here to fight, not listen to you. I'm going to beat this dude down. I'm going to make him remember. I'm going to make him remember what being a real villain is like. Yet you're still here. about being a villain, they want you to be a villain till it's time to do villain stuff. Oh, let's do it. Okay. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest this evening is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, he hails from the Velvet Pit of Kansas. He is the Midwest Marauder. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are underway. WFC, welcome to Tulsa. My name is C.M. Burnham, and I am joined tonight by a very special correspondent with me, Mr. Steve Fulton. Steve, welcome to the broadcast table here at WFC. Well, thank you, Chris. Do I call you Chris? Do I call you C.M.? Do I call you Burnham? Not Chris. Not Chris? Yeah. It's a little too familiar, huh? Uh, you, don't want, you don't want to get the fans to get familiar with yeah. you. I understand that. We are off and running here with this first Donovan, time. Donovan Era doesn't seem to want to get familiar with the fans either. Well, he may not have wanted to, but uh, he's going to get very familiar with the elbows. And, uh, oh, look out, a familiar with a kryptonite crunch here from Tim oh. Rockwell. As Rockwell going immediately for a try for a pinfall there. And Era swift to the outside. I mean, it's, it's a smart move. Get a little breather. Take his time. He doesn't want to go back to Kansas just yet. Mira uh, on the pursuit here, but uh, ducks one and that big chop across the chest there from Rockwell, or to Rockwell. Return there by Rockwell, and now Rockwell forcing Mira back into the ring. A very heartfelt, passionate speech at the opening here. I think Tim's, uh, Tim's taking a little too much time. Uh, yeah, once you get a guy, once you roll a guy back in, you got to get right on him, get, get it done. Or are you going to pay the price? Tim's paying the price for that right here. And look at Ira now, twisting that left arm around, basically trying to, to straight jacket Rockwell. And Rockwell turns over to alleviate that. Now Rockwell making his way back up to his feet. But Ira maintaining control of that left arm. Oh, good pressure there, oh. actually picking... Rockwell up off his feet a couple of times. I could tear a guy's shoulder up. I could put him right out of the line. The Japanese arm drag, and now... Is that what they call that? Yep. All right. Usually you see it running, but it's still, uh, it's still the move itself. And Ira now continuing to maintain pressure and control oh. as Rockwell Tim's attempting to... Get, trying to get a little control there. Oh. Looked like Tim was trying to retreat for a moment. I mean, that's good uh, ring positioning, veteran move there. 
Well, you heard Tim say, 18 years in this business. You know that as well as I do. We were both around for the very beginnings of his career. And Rockwell off the ropes. Oh, tried for uh, one of those drive-by knees, I think, but he missed. Oh, here here quick oh. and gets a one. Didn't even quite get the two on it, says referee Dylan Feltz. We acknowledge our referees here. I do. Okay, good to know. They're humans. They deserve you know, names. Oh, that's, that's got to hurt. Donovan, just, yeah, he's just punishing Tim now. Yeah, Ira maintaining control with that rear chin lock as, again, Rockwell trying to get back to that all oh. vertical base, but Ira quick to cut that off. Nope. And, again, not the full three. But that was a two this time. Not up First to the time two. was a one. Here yes. go. Next one's going to be a three. It could be if Rockwell's not able to uh, find an escape, find a way to get back in control of this match. Irish whip. There goes... Rockwell, corner to corner, diving oh, splash, nobody but nobody home. home. This may be the chance for Rockwell as the back elbow is delivered. Tim is coming back, firing up. This might be a knockout. And Rockwell now has Ira in a bad, bad place because we know what's about to happen here. Rockwell with Ira in the target. There's one. No, I think this guy still has some life in him. I think he's about to get up. And he's, uh, if there's any life in him, he's not showing it right now because that's two, and we know the third one. This is his last chance. He yeah. it up. Once that knee pad comes down. Straight to the temple. And Rockwell, oh, I thought he was going to now. There he goes. going to drag him out, going to pull him out of the corner there. Sit down, oh. powerbomb style. Could this be enough here? No, somehow there is still life. I thought he was going to slingshot era. him for a second there. I thought that's what he was going to go for, a slingshot across the ring. I was wrong. And look at Ira fire back. Butterfly suplex. Oh. Takes Rockwell that's over. On two. And yeah. still not enough to keep Stuck on two. Rockwell down. Rockwell fighting as he fights every single show that we do for the kids here. Because that is what we are about. Well, maybe you should take some time off. You know, does he have to fight for the kids every show? That's what WFC is all about. I, I think he should take the season off. Well, he had a little break last year, uh, unintended. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Duck underneath. Oh, oh. knee in the midsection. I thought maybe he was going to set up for that great line, but instead. The drive by with the knee again. I don't know. I thought Donovan had it for a while. Here we there. go. Steps in, wraps that leg around. Great yeah. find, DDT. That's probably going to be it. And this could be the end. One pinfall attempt by Tim Rockwell, I believe, and that's all it took. That great find, DDT, has brought him many, many victories over the years. After the running knees, I don't, I don't, I think it was almost pretty much done by then. Donovan showed some, a little bit of life after that, but once you get clocked in the head by a knee, it's pretty much over. Your winner, Tim Rockwell. A jacket like that. Debian Black making his way around here, introducing himself to the WFC faithful. So he's about to step foot into the ring here, his first time in WFC. Black 
uh, really making a, a name for himself in recent How long has this kid been in the business? Uh, not very long, less than two years worth of time. Uh, okay. And But he has certainly made a heavy impression. He's impressed a lot of the promoters, mostly in the central and southern reaches of Oklahoma. What about Cappuccino Jones here? How long has he been in? Even less time than Devon. Okay. Jones had his first match at the beginning of July, so it's only been about three months worth of time. And as you said, an incredibly athletic individual and a, man, a kid with a ton yeah, I love of watching potential. Him. Love watching him. He is still raw, He is, but he's still much more polished than anybody with less than three months worth, full months worth of experience has any right to be. Um, he, he is a what we call in this business a natural, and he is going to excel here as long as bad things don't happen with him. It's our next main adventure, you're saying. Give him a couple of years. Okay. Maybe just one. I mean, he really, he's got all the tools there. He's just looking for that great opportunity here to uh, impress as referee he's Jesse Beeler. He's got a good Beeler. size, he's got a good height, he's got a good Calls physique. for the bell. So a couple of young lions here, here in WFC. Both trying to get the crowd behind them. And off with the collar and elbow tie up in the middle of the ring. And Devion, quick to the hammerlock. Must be that uh, experience over there. Well, maybe so. He is, of course, a, tech a highly technical wrestler. Jones, more of the high-flying style, the, the, the more of the sudden burst of attack. Uh, but he certainly can I don't wrestle. know if he's going up on the ropes today. I'm kind of a low ceiling yeah. here. Welcome to Tulsa Wrestling. Well, you got to adapt. You have to adapt your style to the environment. The environment is not going to adapt to you. That's true. Black holding on here. As Jones back to his feet, picks oh. up Black and drops him on the back of his head. And that, that aggressive style yeah. as Jones off the ropes. Oh, he's caught. Look at that. Look at how smoothly Devion rolled up into that. Is it a single leg? Or has he got both? He's got both legs. He's got, he's got both, both legs, legs in the Boston Crab. I couldn't help but notice that uh, Cappuccino Jones was having a little trouble with that referee. Something didn't agree with him. Now he's paying for that. Paying for that distraction. Nice leg sweep into the cover. The pace of this match quickly picking up uh, for a brief moment as both men now basically in a standoff and realizing that maybe this is going to be a longer yeah, they competition were than they were before. like a pinball machine right there. And you might want to try to preserve some of that energy, wear your opponent down, and then find it. Oh, oh, oh. And that's just Jones. Jones to the outside. Black Quickly being followed and Sum taken down. Somersault Plancha not going to let Jones dictate the pace of this. He's going to take the fight straight to Jones. Jones back in the ring now. Going to that corner for support. Black coming in on the far corner. Going to charge in. Oh, 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 caught by Jones. Running power slam there by Jones. He's playing possum in the corner. It paid off for him. And now in the mount position here, Jones. Hard strikes to the head. And again, Jones needs to focus more on his opponent, yeah. less on referee Jesse Beeler. Let the ref do their job, you do yours. And Jones dragging those eyes across that top rope. That's just a That's not, there's nothing technical. Nothing technical, nothing pretty about rubbing a guy's face on the ropes. Well, I think that Jones realized that he could not match hold for hold, skill for skill with, with Black. 
And so he's resorting now to the shortcuts. He's resorting to the you more. Think that, you think that quick back and forth in the beginning, you think that got under his skin? It may have gotten, maybe not so much under his skin, but into his head. I yeah. think maybe it caused him to lose the focus and to, to doubt his right. own skills. And Jones now, nice vertical suplex very snap nice. style. Very nice. That's why you can't say too much bad about the kid because that, that looked real nice. His moves are real pretty. But notice he was just a little bit slow to follow up with the cover. He dusted oh, yeah. the hands. He wanted everybody yeah. to see what he'd done. And that's where the experience factor uh, or the lack thereof comes into play here. That's what a couple more years will teach him not to do that. Wipe your hands after you get the pinfall. Mm -hmm. But following up here and continuing to press the advantage, pushing that four count, I mean, it's not good tactics, but it's gonna, it may be effective. Once again, he's just he's taking too much time. I don't know if that's going to work out for him in the long, in the long run. <laughs> Jones now, Irish whip again, corner to corner. And Jones assessing the situation before charging in, up. but Black out of the way. Yep, this time he was the one playing possum. Black now off the top rope. Oh! oh. With a standing drop kick. That is not good for the digestion. Jones now down again with the lateral press, does not hook a leg. He's going to have to do a little bit more than that. But Jones looks kind of hurt here. Well, he looks, and he's, I think maybe a little frustration may be setting in there. But he's quick to snatch the hold. What's he got on him now? A sleeper? Uh, I'm not sure if it's a sleeper or just a rear chin lock. From our vantage point, we can't quite tell. But. Forcing Black to carry the weight here and forcing him to get back up to that vertical base, expend a lot of energy. Black, though, right now to it. Did fight his way out. Ducks the clothesline off the ropes. Comes by, done. Running clothesline of his own. There's the second one. Swinging the miss up. And, oh, playing some face first. Nice. Get on. And Black him. now. Oh, how close. Is that, nope, it? that was two. That was two. That was two and four. 3.18 Yeah, that was so close our rev that our bell ringer thought that it was over as well. But uh, no, it was only two and, and nine tenths. Black, though, waiting for the opportunity. Oh, oh leapfrog. Leapfrog, leapfrog by, by Jones. And Black went face first Kicked into the, the corner. Down. Jones now off the corner, spinning. Oh. Hooks both legs and only two Not again. Enough. Not enough. And again, Jones in the corner with Beeler. He needs to stop this. This is going to cost him the match. Somebody's going to have to have a talk with this kid. He's just not in it. Oh! Okay, I thought this kid was out of this, but his head was completely in that moment. He knew exactly what he was doing. I, I hate to say it, but I agree with you. And now, there we go. Yeah. Jones dropping black. Now it's time. And that's the win. And your winner, Cappuccino Jones. Cappuccino Jones, I believe this is his first win here in WFC. And I don't think it's going to be his last. If he no matter can... how you feel about how he did it, he did it. He did indeed.
Okay. Contest this evening is scheduled for one fall. And it is for the WFC Hometown Heroes Championship. Introducing first the challenger. He hails from the indigenous land. He is the treaty enforcer. very different reaction than Justin Lee has been receiving here uh, for his entire time here in WFC. Listen, but a reaction I'm accustomed to hearing from Justin Lee from many, many years ago. Um, I, like others, was shocked at uh, the actions of Justin, the actions of Dan Weber at our 11th anniversary show, and then the, the justification, no pun intended, but the justification that Justin gave after turning on, on the fans, turning on Coco, and, and winning the Hometown Heroes Championship. Justin seems to think that he's some sort of savior of Oklahoma wrestling. I know another guy who used to call himself that, and his company's out of business now. But uh, Justin Lee really believes that it is his duty, somehow, to save Oklahoma wrestling from itself. Wow. I'm no, I'm no fan of Justin Lee, and I'm definitely not a friend of Justin Lee. Uh, but I, I don't know about that. I, I think, I think Oklahoma wrestling is just fine without needing a savior. But you know what I'm surprised about here is this rematch is happening so soon. Well, I suspect that that is in part due to the actions of Tim Rockwell now that he has control of this. Um, obviously, there's going to need to be a rematch, and, and Coco wanted to waste no time in this situation. So I don't know. I think if I was Coco, I think I would have taken that time to reassess. I, I applaud him for wanting to get right back, right back into the race, get his belt back before somebody else beats Justin mm -hmm. Lee. At least he knows who he'd be facing for. Him. So I understand that. I just don't know about facing Justin Lee so early with Dan Weber. Uh, that is a good point because Dan Weber was not present for the match. He came out towards the end of the match and obviously was a huge deciding factor, but he wasn't present for the majority of the match when Justin Lee won the championship. And now Weber, and, and Weber with that same change of attitude that Justin Lee had, Weber a, a lurking presence on the outside and, and for such a, quite a while earlier this year, it seemed like Dan Weber and Coco were building this relationship. They had formed this this tag team that was gaining some traction and gaining some success. Well, they were friends. They were, yeah. But they, they didn't start that way. No, no, but I, I, I got the feeling in the locker room that Coco and Dan Weber were becoming friends. They were at least friendly yes. and could work together. They certainly could. But I, all that was thrown out the window. All right, well, right now, Justin Lee on the outside, which, of course, would serve him well. A count-out loss, he would not lose the championship, but Justin... Uh, oh, it's not beneath him. It, no, it's not. But I also feel like it's not the way. That he, he wants to win this not because it's the quote unquote right thing to do, but it's the right thing to serve his narrative. It, it, he wants to show how great he is, how he can lead Oklahoma wrestling forward. And to do that, he's going to. So he can rub it in everyone's face. Yes, especially Coco's. Yeah. A couple of chops, and I think Justin realized that that was not the approach to do. And he's quick to bail to the outside and just turn his back on Coco. Well, he's got Dan Weber right there. Yeah. Watching his back. I don't know. I think Coco might need a, a new friend. Well, I think Justin Lee oh. made a big mistake there as Coco, tired of playing Coming around, going to bring Justin in his own. Right on his tailbone. 
Oh. Coco with the cross body. And Justin trying to hide in the ropes. Justin, of course, earlier in the match was naming off all the, ma the matches or the uh, removes that he could do. Uh, there's oh. a crossbody from Justin, but that didn't work out the same way. I Look out over the top. I was afraid Coco was stalling a little too much there, but Coco seems to be completely in control of this match. Nice follow-away slam there. Could we have the new champion here? Oh, to only two. And that would be if Justin Lee loses the championship tonight, which is a big if, but if he loses the title, it would be not only the loss of the championship, but it would be his first pinfall in WFC, his first loss. And there we saw the presence yeah. of Dan Weber. And Justin Lee, no stranger to utilizing outside forces. How to occupy that ref's time, his attention. Used to be the leader of a group called the Violence Alliance. He knows what it takes to, uh, to utilize people on the outside to his benefit in order to preserve a championship. Let's go to Courtney Hole. You got that? Courtney. And Justin now maintaining control here. Oh! Angle. I, I thought for a moment that Justin was just playing around with him. No, that's that, that was a... Uh, Shouldn't do that to a guy. Justin now clubbing forearm in the back as the WFC faithful try to rally their support there for Coco. Justin Lee is just throwing all sense of sportsmanship right out the window. Well, this is very much about him, and he's he made that very clear. Even though he claims that he's doing this for a bigger a bigger sense. It's really just about him and his ego. And we both know Justin has a huge ego. Oh, chop block oh. there. I, I might check him, ref. I might check him. Justin going to continue work on that lower extremity. I wouldn't count, count Coco out just yet. Now, Justin, what's he doing now? He's going over to one of the top turnbuckles. Seems to be fiddling with that. Oh, this is just, he's, oh. Well, loosening it. I thought, I thought, I think the same as you. I thought uh, that yeah. Dan Weber was getting himself into position for something, but no, instead. Now, now, Justin, now, now the distraction aspect. And again, Justin, back to the turnbuckle. I don't understand He's what... He's going to expose that turnbuckle. Well, yeah, clearly what's going on here. Referee, meanwhile, having to count Coco on the outside. He is out there. It's up to five. Justin's having some trouble with that. I'm not sure if he's got it loosened up the way he wanted to or if he just gave up on the situation, whatever. Coco I back don't. in the ring and Justin putting pressure to that already weakened knee. And now just biting oh, the on. finger. Come on, ref. I'm not sure if he knows how that turnbuckle works. Justin Lee doesn't, I don't think he's really a pay his dues kind of guy. You know, well, uh, when you win a championship, that's my per that's my personal feeling. When you win a championship, your very first match, you know, you get a highly inflated opinion of yourself. Well, maybe if he would have spent some more time on the ring crew, we would know how that works. Now, Dan Weber, he set up a few rings in his time. Yes, he has. And Weber, I think, was coming up to try to continue whatever work it is that that Justin had begun. Now, Justin. Tell him to check the boot, but continuing the punishment. Meanwhile, Weber continues to work over the. Uh, I don't know. If uh, Weber's Weber's got it off. Weber's got the the corner pad off. Oh, of course. And Justin now going to go introduce. Nope. Coco blocks it. Okay. Oh. oh. Oh, 
shot like that could end a guy's career. Live by the turnbuckle, spine buster by Coco. And we could be on the verge of Coco becoming a two-time Hometown Heroes champion as Coco oh, trying to set up. No. Nope. Yeah. And Justin able to evade that situation. Maybe a kick to the back of the leg I didn't see, but, nah, but Coco yeah. down, that already injured knee being favored. Justin's going to run. He's going to run right out that door. He's going to take the count out. Justin over arguing with Granny Holster. He's lost well, focus on, on Coco. Coco does not want to lose this opportunity. Dan wasn't much use there. I think uh, Justin's going to want to review the tape here. Dan should have done something about that. Oh, man. Big overhand chop. The entire place heard that. Coco pick it up. Justin and runs him spine first in the corner. Over the referee oh, up to seven. And now a face off between Coco and, and Dan Weber. Referee at eight. Justin back in. Coco, Coco's been counted out. Uh, no. Well, if taking a count out from the help, by, with the help of your friend, taking a count out to save your belt, I don't know if that's going to, I don't know if that's going to uh, revolutionize Oklahoma wrestling. Yeah, I don't either. I think that's Save the, it or whatever he's trying to do. Right. And I think right now, Coco... Or Justin needs to beat a hasty retreat to the back because Coco is going to get that sticky uses. Gentlemen, we are moving on with tag team competition here as the ranch hands make their way to the ring here. Uh, obviously notable by his absence. One big Stevie Caballero who is no longer present in WFC uh, thanks to the losing efforts uh, and our big five on five contest at the 11th anniversary show. You know, it's weird. I, I've been with WFC since the very beginning. As was I. And I have no idea who this guy people keep talking about. I've never seen him. Stevie Cavallaro? Yeah. Well, you never will anymore. Well, what you will see are the ranch chants here. Wrangler Rhett uh, and Deadeye Dawson with... Bunkhouse Bobby as well. So, is this a, is, what we got going on here? Is this a tag match? This is a tag team match. It is meant to be two on two. It will be Wrangler Rep and Deadeye Dawson. Bunkhouse Bobby there for, I really don't know. Moral why. support? I mean, I guess. Are they, are they conducting their tag teams under uh, Wrangler rules? I'm not sure that any of these men really know what the rules are. Okay. Yeah. I mean, one of them is literally dressed as a clown. Yeah. So. I know, I know. I know there's a long, proud rodeo clown tradition that I don't want to make fun of or belittle. Well, you don't have to. He does it all by himself. Yeah. So if you are a rodeo clown, or know and love a rodeo clown, come on down to a WFC show and show your 
clown love. I think that's the term for another group. Well, or you're, or, you know. <laughs> Anyway, the opposing side, of course, the former WFC Tag Team Champions, Toxic Masculinity, who Reddit, I don't go to. are back on the same page. We thought for a bit that maybe there was going to be a separation, maybe there was going to be a breakup, but uh, I don't think you can ever break up the Johnny. I don't think. I, I, you know, I, and I agree with you. I really do, I, because it seemed like they were going to be, and then they overcame Whatever differences they had between themselves, they came together and they were very vital in the uh, in the win on the part of Tim Rockwell's team at the 11th anniversary event. I'm surprised how fast the fans got behind the Johnny's. Or am I? I think that the fans rec always recognized the Johnny's ability. They just didn't like the attitude that they came in with initially. But over time, the they. The fans respected them, and they in turn learned to appreciate that respect. That's the best that I can put it forward. They appreciate the Johnny lifestyle. Yeah. There's a term for you. Well, Johnny Dynamite on the inside, Johnny Lightning on the outside, and Dynamite in full control of Wrangler Rhett. I'll say this about the Johnnies. It's almost like every show, almost, they have new and exciting ring gear. It's amazing. They the effort that these guys go. They certainly invest in themselves. And you can invest in them too. Their, uh, their merchandise table is certainly highly decked out. I'm sure they learned that from their trainer. I doubt the Wranglers, or the, the ranch hands. Yeah. I doubt the ranch hands spend too much of time or their earnings. Well, their I mean, first of all, you gotta you got to win stuff in order to earn stuff. And, uh, the WFC faithful are very vocal in their displeasure of the ranch hands. Dynamite now brutalizing the chest of the former WFC Drillsville champion, Wrangler Rhett. Lost that title to back to Hornsby in a bull rope match, most appropriately. Could not rope that steer. I think, I think uh, Wrangler Rhett needs a rematch. I'm sure that Hornsby would give it what to them. Oh, they've got a big pink hat. A big pink hat. Oh! Well, typically that would uh, be a good sa Saturday night, but it is Sunday. Oh. I'm not sure. Are we going to have to worry about blue laws here? Because uh, Yeah, I, I, I don't uh, think we can commentate <laughs> on this. Johnny Lightning doing his best Stan Hansen there. Now getting flagged. Pink hat still in the ring. It's legal. Oh, there it goes. I don't know, man. That looked pretty good on. Yeah, Wrangler Rhett needs to, yeah. and that's a good accessory for him. I want to keep that. I want to hold on Pandemonium has broken out here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the ranch hands certainly uh, seem to be suffering at the hands of the Johnnies as Rhett tenderly makes his way back into the ring. And makes the tag to bring in Deadeye Dawson. Dawson's still a relative newcomer here in WFC. Uh, I think he hasn't quite made 10 full appearances on WFC events, so uh, he just kind of appeared out of nowhere. He is a scrapper, though. He, he is. You do not want to make him angry. You do not want to... Uh, you don't want to throw down under his rules. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that. I'm still trying to figure out which of his eyes is the dead one. Maybe it's his third eye? I don't know. Lightning with a couple of chops and a standing drop kick, and Dawson finds himself on the ropes. Swing and a miss there, and another one as Lightning comes off the ropes, goes for a crossbody, but Dawson catches him, plants him down. Uh, from that, I'm going to say it's his left eye. Okay. Well, that's appropriate. The left eye is the dead one. Hashtag TLC. And now Rhett now to two tag on back one. in. A little two on one now. There he goes. Well, sticking with two on one, I, I mean, you expect that. But somewhere lurking out there is Bunkhouse Bobby. And, uh, 
Yeah, Bunkhouse Bobby is out there somewhere. Yeah, there he is. So I see the hat. It could become three on one at any moment as Rhett has taken control here over Johnny Lightning. See, I, I, I don't think uh, Wrangler Rhett there. I don't think he needs these guys. I think he'd go off on his own. I think he'd, uh, I think he'd do great. That's just my opinion. All right. Oh, well, oh, Rhett there argues he is. with the referee. There's Bunkhouse Bobby getting his licks in. And Johnny Dynamite oh, and he's trying to grab the referee's attention, but just draws the attention to himself. Rhett able to maintain control. He's got Johnny Lightning on the ropes. Crowds Rhett behind Johnny. They though. certainly are, but Lightning's... Not, really still not able to quite draw the energy he needs off of this. Now Red off the ropes, comes down, big knee to the back, and now it's going to right up. Oh, is he going, is, does oh, this still going count? For it. He's is, going for it. Did, did he, he get the eight seconds? Apparently he did. Up oh, there's the I buzzer. Heard the he got the eight, eight seconds. seconds. He got eight seconds. Good for him. What do you get for the eight seconds? I'm not really sure. I, I think a sore posterior, but other than that. Get that man his popsicle. Rhett now backing lightning to the corner. Big chop across the chest. And Rhett now going to... Looks like he's setting him up to right the other he corner. He does, and with a good deal of force. As Rhett charges in with a clothesline there, too. Two clotheslines as Lightning has absorbed a tremendous amount of punishment over the course of several minutes here. Another Irish whip, oh, swing and a miss there as Lightning takes down Rhett, but Rhett able to get back to his feet first. Lightning nips up, inverted atomic drop, gonna go, oh, no, gonna pick him up, scoop slam. And Lightning makes the tag, but I don't know I think no, the, referee the referee's distracted. Distracted with, da with Dawson, and the referee's going to... I don't know that... Well, the referee, I don't think, is quite getting through the dynamite. Okay, now he's getting through. Says he didn't see yeah, the tag. This is unfortunate. Well, all Lightning has to do is get in and, and make the tag back, but instead he goes back to control Rhett. Maybe he got enough time to rest on the outside that brief little moment. Is Lightning so. not going to go up top to the... He had a chance for a clean tag right there. Top rope, look out, watch your head, Lightning. Oh, oh. nobody there. The fourth move of Doom not pulled, being pulled off. I think it was that lowered ceiling. He was looking out for it. And a big splash there by Dawson. Dawson with the pinfall attempt. And two and a half. That would have been a major upset right there. The crowd is firmly behind the Johnnies. They love the Johnnies. <coughs> Ref doesn't seem to love the Johnnies so much. Dawson with the repeated shoulder block tackles into the midsection. And Dawson now quick to follow up on Johnny Lightning. He was oh. trying for a snap mare, but instead changed his mind. Oh, and Lightning all caught up in the in there, I think maybe, I don't know, he, he tried to avoid the corner. He's good at he's good at running into people, but when it comes to the actual wrestling moves, well, I, I think he just stick to running into people. Might be his thing. Many, many fine wrestlers have made a career out of running into people. Tag to Wrangler Rhett, who certainly has run into many. Oh, and double team on Lightning. Here we go again, a second double team. Rhett's got to get control of this match. Does, needs to apply that five count as Dawson now exits the ring. And the ranch hands have put quite a beating on Johnny Lightning. There was that brief reprise with the missed tag, but uh, Lightning now as far from his corner as he can possibly be. Well, I didn't think I didn't think they had the smarts for that, but they they got the smarts to 
keep them on their side of the ring. Well, I, I will say that I, I really believe that much of their success together came from the guidance of that big Stevie Caballero. With Caballero gone and with the notable absence of Reed as well, uh, they needed to step up, and they seem to be doing so here. They're sure. coming to put sure. together their own game plan, and it is working for them. Like I said, I have no, no frame of reference there. I'm not really sure who you're talking about. But, um, no, I didn't see. That was a, that was, that was a nice little forearm there. I, th I think there's something about this, this rodeo red. Even if it is just kicking guys when they're down. Well, it's a tandem thing, and now double elbow drop. Wow. As, again, Johnny Dynamite doing more harm than good. This referee is not a Johnny fan. This referee being pulled in multiple directions at the same time. As Dawson now going to pick up, well, try to pick up Johnny Lightning. Two attempts. And instead, Lightning reverses it. But again, needs to make his way to his corner. Needs to make that tag. Wow, uh, this one's gonna be a this one's gonna be a double count out. That's what I'm saying. We got Tuck over here at the table. You hold the money. We'll make bets here. I'm saying double count out. <laughs> Dynamite! That's something we can Pick do. Him. We start taking bets while we do this. I think we need to focus on okay. what's actually happening here. Oh, uh, and nice move there by Johnny Dynamite, who's basically handling both branch hands on his own. Oh. Dawson over the top, low bridge. Low bridge, and all down to, uh-oh. Johnny Dynamite now makes the tag back to Lightning as both Johnnies target one of the ranch hands. You might want to give uh, Bobby there. Look out, so, oh, missed super kick there. Intercepted one on the other side. And the third one finally connects. Here we go. Lightning rolls down and gets the pin. They might have broken the rules right out there at the end with uh, Dynamite rolling into the ring. Technically, that was a well, the referee, two on one. Or maybe the referee just compensating for all the uh, anti Johnny That's true. feeling. That's, that's true. That's true. He owed them one, didn't yeah. he? So okay. he just waved it off. All right. I I'll take that. I'll take that. Toxic masculinity back to their winning ways and hoping to find a way to get back in contention for the WFC Tag Team Championships. Currently held by London Collins. See, they know how to wait for a rematch. Ladies and gentlemen, we see now approaching the ring a man who came so close at the 11th anniversary event to becoming the WFC champion, the man known as the Metal Monster, Big Man Thrash, one of the four participants in that fatal four-way match for the WFC title that now is held by Dutch Hagen. I think the people would have been okay with Thrash as the I champion. thoroughly believe that the people came behind Thrash ever since he won the Freedom Rings Rumble. They really hoped that he would walk out as the champion. And you can hear the reaction here to him as he comes out here. Of course, someone handed Thrash a microphone, it looks like. You know, I came out here playing to have the match that I've been wanting for a long time. But that 
that's not happening. It's okay, because I came out here and I'm still looking for a fight. This is We Are Tulsa, or I'm Tulsa's best. Thrash is ready. Thrash is indeed, and here come a couple of men who are a couple of the few that can match Thrash in size. Eddie Levon and Anthony Wild call themselves Southern Aristocracy. He called out anyone, got two. He did, and that, you know, I, I, in normal situations, I think that most wrestlers would uh, be a bit concerned that two men answer, but Thrash doesn't care. Thrash is an angry, angry man right here. He didn't get the WFC championship, and now he got deprived of a feature match that he was looking forward to. And uh, he's going to take his aggressions out on just about anybody. I, well, maybe it's just, uh, well, I thought, remember, maybe it's just going to be thought, yeah. Eddie LeVon in the ring, but instead both men stepping through. And both members of Southern Aristocracy attacking Thrash. Of course, this is not a match here. The bell uh, has it even run. Well, we don't have a referee, and I don't think it matters because Thrash taking down both men. Oh, what's this? Oh, no oh, look. Look who's back. It's the savior. All right, Trash, I've heard you describe as Tulsa's best wrestling prospect. Well, that's simply not true. You see, I'm the best Oklahoma has. I can spot talent. I can mold anybody into greatness. Now, you want to wrestle Oklahoma's best? Well, Oklahoma's best is right here. Oh, did you think I was going to wrestle you? No, no, you're going to wrestle Oklahoma's best prospect. The Greenwood Boogeyman. The Shotgun himself. Dan Weber. Well, Thrash, a former Hometown Heroes champion himself, but uh, the shortest reigning Hometown Heroes champion of all time. Thought maybe he would have another opportunity here, but instead, facing off against a man who, another one who can match him with power and size. And for all of Justin Lee's faults, and there seem, they seem to be stacking up in, uh, in the past couple of weeks, I will 100% agree with him on one thing he said. Dan Weber may very well be Oklahoma's greatest wrestling prospect. This kid has ascended real fast up the uh, up the ramp here. Too fast, maybe? I'm not sure about that. We'll see here tonight, maybe, if he can uh, pull out a victory over the big man Thrash. What happened to the other two guys? I thought they had a match with him. Well, they, he, they just answered the call, but then uh, he took them down both at once, and I think they thought better of the situation. You know, that makes me not like Justin Lee even more, taking well, <laughs> matches away from people. The, 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 uh, the dislikability factor, Justin, Justin has a very slappable face. Uh, slappable, kickable, and uh, chewable. It's going to be his next T-shirt. <laughs> And Justin apparently wanting an up-close-and-personal view as he remains at ringside. Thrash with a very focused sense of aggression here. I don't think he cares that Justin Lee is out here at all. Thrash and Weber jockeying for position. For so many months we saw Thrash face off against Steven Cruz, and those two bulls tore into each other in this ring. I think that Weber is a similar physical prospect here to Cruz. Oh, look at them, just straight head-to-head. Uh, yeah. -head. yeah. 
And they're not, neither one of them is going to take a step back. Weber with the first strike. And now just trading blows in the middle of the ring. Thrash getting the better of it, though. Two behemoths going at it. And a poke to the eye. Oh, look what Justin Lee has taught Dan Weber. Yeah. Weber now with shoulder tackles to the midsection as he's got the big man cornered. This was the kind of competition that the fans clearly wanted to see. You could hear them cheering for it. And Thrash recovering nicely. Unleashing those chops, but they don't really seem to be phasing Dan as much. No, I see pain on his face. Oh, there's, there's a little bit of pain, pain, sure, but uh, I don't think that it's doing the damage that Thrash might think they are. There it is. Look at that. See? Dan still in control. Nice back kick there. And Dan oh. going downstairs. Thrash is going to have to shake this off and get back into this. He was unmovable for a little while there. But that, uh, that chop to the knee that he took. I, yeah, and then he's gonna be continuing there. to focus on that knee, driving it into the ring mat. May well have uh, caused some damage to Patella tendon, ACL, MCL. You know, I don't think this kind of stuff was what, uh, in the official class, I don't think this is the kind of stuff that Justin Lee was teaching the whole class. I think he, I think going after that knee like that. It's, it's definitely a Justin Lee tactic. And Weber now going from behind. If he can pull Thrash back, maybe... Great find the legs around the midsection to try to force a submission. Thrash trying to fight his way out of this. No, I don't think I don't think any kind of submission is going to. Oh, I said try. I did say try. Look at Thrash oh, going to pick oh. up the man. He's going to go for the Thrash compactor. He couldn't maintain the balance. Could stay hold and Weber is he going to go for the ankle lock? He does. He's got the ankle lock and he's got Thrash pretty well Thrash positioned. Is, Thrash is so close to the ropes. Can Thrash fight through the pain and can Thrash continue to ignore just Justin Lee? You just gotta, oh, just get beyond that referee right there. You're, oh, Thrash there rolling through, go. he's grabbed the ropes. But Weber not breaking the hold, Thrash making him break the hold. Yeah, I thought Thrash was gonna, gonna take a rope break. Nope, he fought out of it. Good for him. Thrash back to his feet, but that left knee certainly has had some damage done to it. Thrash, though, trying to fight through the pain. One oh. solid shot from Weber, though. Okay. Oh, look at that shotgun drop kick. Boop. Oh, Thrash back up. Right up. And Thrash running through Dan Weber. Still limping though. Still limping. He's going to need his big power moves. And again, to take out Dan Weber. Back nose to nose. Both men may be coming with the same idea. They were. Double clothesline. Both men down. Oh, look. I think. Where is Justin? Oh, uh, Justin, Justin Lee, Lee went to go get. Yeah, of course. The oh. Southern aristocracy, oh, and now, now he's, now he's going to let these guys have their match. That's that's nice of him. Well, Thrash now finding himself in essentially a four-on-one situation, and he's not backing down. He's taking on all four men. What are the rules of this? The referee match? calling for the bell. The referee's throwing this. He's disqualified, obviously. Uh, Dan Weber. Oh, okay. Oh, here comes you know, Tim Rockwell. Yeah. Rockwell and Shirley out. Sam Stackhouse out. Alex Royal out. Coco there. 
You can do a lot of things, but you cannot throw the refs around like that. Rockwell and his forces holding the ring. And Tim Rockwell and Justin Lee, of course, they know each other very well. It's because of those two that Justin Lee is back here in WFC. Yeah, but I can think of... I can think of one more than one blow-off match between Tim and Justin Lee. And oh, they're back out it. Why'd this guy come running out again? What just happened here? Well, there's uh, there's guts and there's brains, and I'm guessing that Anthony Wild. Oh! A show of dominant strength by Big Man Thrash as he plants Anthony Wilde in the middle of that ring. What does he call that move? Thrash Compactor. That's a good name. It's a good name. Comes the newest member of, well, is he a member of the Ranch Hands or is he, I, I don't know. I, I'm not even going to ask this question. The Space Cowboy, Jason Jones. I, I don't know if, if Jason Jones is the Ranch Hand type, but he does seem like the kind of guy that would have some fellas on the payroll. Well, he, yep. And I guess he so if there's anything revealed going some of that. on here. I mean, look at that jacket. Oh, he loves you to talk about that jacket, let me tell you. That's a, that's a jacket of a guy in charge. <laughs> Speaking of guys with jackets. <laughs> here comes the man who survived. A last man standing match with Tommy Dean to retain his WFC Prime Championship. A bear fighter from St. Petersburg, Russia, originally. And a man who has done almost everything here in WFC. But is very proud to represent this program and to hold that championship on behalf of the fans here. Maybe he hasn't been here since the beginning of WFC competing, but he was around at the very beginning when he was just starting to come into the business. Yeah, he, he served a few different roles. Let's go up to Tuck Davian for the introductions. Yeah. Our next contest this evening is scheduled for one fall. For the WFC Pride Championship. Introducing first, wow. the challenger. He is accompanied to the ring this evening by the Ranch Hands. He hails from Pierce, Arkansas. He is the hardest working man in professional wrestling, the Space Cowboy, Jason Jones. A resounding chorus of boos for the Space Cowboy. Dimitri 
Alexandrov holding or handing that championship belt over to our referee Colton, who holds it up for everyone to see. As we are about to get underway with this second championship match here. And All bears. Uh, I've not met a bear that Dimitri's liked. I've never heard him speak well of any of them. Koala bears qualify as a bear? Uh, they are marsupials, so I think technically they are exempt from that. They're not really bears. They're just called bears. They're just called bears, yeah. You know, like French toast really isn't from France. Right, right, right. Because I couldn't see him having any heat with a koala bear. Well, they, they're cute, but they are kind of... They got razor sharp claws. Yeah, they're, they're a little aggressive, and they smell... I just, I don't understand why Jason Jones has decided to ally himself with the people that he's now. I, I don't, I don't understand why he's chosen to, to well, throw everything. Understand. If you go to Arkansas. I've been there once. And you, and you see Jason Jones in action. Yeah. The people adore him. They do. And he knows it too. But, uh. He doesn't, the people don't feel the need to like him here, and he doesn't feel the need to have that adoration. Not anymore. He, he certainly tried. He, he certainly, for many, and it brought him a lot of success, but now he seems to, to think that it's okay to take things a different direction, and we'll see if it works out for him tonight, because he has never held singles, chance, singles gold and here in WFC. Well could. Alexandrov. Peppering Jones. I know it's not officially a four-on-one match, but it might as well be. Well, you do have to watch those, you know, the outside presence here. Alexandrov, of course, has recently uh, taken it upon himself outside of WFC to begin to compete in the deathmatch ranks. So I'm sure he's accustomed to facing off against huge odds and putting his body on the line. And now Jones complaining about Alexandrov hitting him in the eye. Oh, well that could be very serious. I can, I can see why he would want to. Uh, oh, look at top bear. And he puts down the ranch hands. I think he knocked a couple of them right to the back. Good, they should stay there. Knocked a couple of them back into the locker room, I think. Oh, come on. Jones now rolled back into the ring by Alexandrov. He's trying to make his way in, but I think one of them had a hold of his leg. Yeah, they were grabbing his leg. That's an old Stevie Caballero trick. I know you don't realize, remember or don't know that. But no, I, I saw it many yeah. times. Okay. And now Jones. Jones with the Irish whip. Running back elbow puts Alexandrov off and, uh, and just Jones with the Fargo the strut. Right That's a lackadaisical pin if I ever saw one. Yeah. You gotta hook I mean it wasn't one finger, but you know, right. nobody does that anymore. Now Jones just choking Alexandrov over that middle rope. And then trying to, and here comes the numbers game. While one ranch hand does the distraction, the other one does the dirty work as Wrangler Rhett gets his two and a half cents in. And every time one of those guys will interfere, Dimitri's chances of winning this go down. Alexandrov has long prided himself on being a a lone man, a lone wolf, if you will. He, he, of course, a former WFC Tag Team Champion, but his partner has not been here for a long, long time. Alexandrov has had to fight on his own and has been very successful fighting on his own, but I gotta wonder, with the odds stacked against him in this manner, with the surrounding uh, of the ranch hands, as Alexandrov is unceremoniously dumped out of the ring. Does he need a new pen pal? Mm. And And now, Jones complaining about the elbow pad. I would I would scrutinize that elbow pad. 
I would scrutinize the ranch hands who are doing the damage on the outside. Allowing, and once again with again. The, the single foot. I don't know. You gotta hook the leg. The arrogance of Jason Jones really overwhelming him here and it, it may well keep him from becoming the prime champion. Jones now throwing Alexander off to the far corner. Swings for a close line, nobody there, but a drop kick from Alexandrov propels the go. Space Cowboy in. Here we go. And Alexandrov trying now. Alexandrov feeling it, the adrenaline coursing through his body. Oh, ranch hands are already starting to. On the boot from the far side. And a spinning lariat puts down Jones. Alexandrov down. Can he retain? No, not yet. Only two. Space Cowboys still got a little bit left in him. And now Alexandrov mounting the second rope. Wrangler right up and, and oh. one of them was the one of the ranch hands just threw Jason Jones Where something. Where did that come from? I that came, I think, from Dead Eye Dawson. Jones has got. I, was it somebody? I think row, it's Brass it? Nux. No, Granny Holster would have shut that down. Look out! Oh no! Oh no! Jones! Jones with the. Are you kidding me? Seriously? Jason Jones! Wow. I won't say, I don't want to say that I had a feeling. I'm astounded. I mean, I shouldn't be. The numbers are right there, but Jason Jones, for the first time, in his long association with WFC, Jason Jones has captured singles gold here, but it took three ranch hands and a pair of what looked like brass knucks yeah. for him to do that. As soon as I saw that jacket, I said, that's a guy with a plan. Well, the plan has succeeded, as Jones can now call himself prime champion. And Alexandrov is irate, and I don't blame him. Oh, here he comes. Oh, he's, oh, he's got, got a, chair. a chair. One of the fans just gave him a chair. Look out. I hope somebody doesn't come back from concessions missing a chair. We know that the Hometown Heroes champion is Justin Lee. We are about to find out who the number one contender to that Hometown Heroes championship is going to be as we have our huge feature main event here, a fatal four-way match to determine the number one contender. Out first, the former Prime Champion, former WFC Tag Team Champion, but a man who has never held the Hometown Heroes Championship, even though he pretty much made a reputation for himself here in WFC with a war against another participant in this match for the Hometown Heroes title several years ago. Tommy Dean going to try to uh, restore the graces of Haven, who left the 11th anniversary show without any championships under their control. Dean fell short in his efforts to win the prime championship from Dmitry Alexandrov. And Wes Wesley Crane losing the WFC heavyweight championship in that fatal four-way match yeah, so to where's Dutch Hagen. Where's his buddy? Well, that's a good question. Because they, uh, they're also ones that do seem to enjoy that uh, numbers advantage, but it looks like Tommy Dean uh, rides alone here tonight. And I don't know if you were there that night. 
Mr. Fulton, but I can tell you I have never heard an explosion from a crowd so loud as when Alex Royal made his return to WFC, annihilating one of the ranch hands backstage with a chair and then striding through that curtain. Well, he knows how to make an entry. He certainly does. A former hometown heroes champion himself, as well as a heavyweight champion, tag team champion. Alex Royal was the face of WFC for quite some time and would love to be able to put that gold back around his waist. Remember when the, uh, the Bee Gees did that Sergeant Peppers? I do, yeah, I am, I am that old, band yes. Thing? That looks like the type of jacket they would have wore for that. I can't disagree with that. Now a man who has not graced the ring of WFC for quite some time. I think maybe it was even before pandemic the last time that we saw this man who has been making tremendous strides in the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong environment. 50 caliber Barrett Brown, a favorite of my regular broadcast partner, Travis Fowlhart. Jamie couldn't be here. I know he's going to be very upset that he missed out on the opportunity to call a Barrett Brown match. And to find some guy just lurking around the back. That's kind of how we got Travis Bauer. <laughs> Maybe we should start auctioning off. <laughs> don't, don't put that on me, no, sir, please. No. Uh, let me tell you about. You don't want one of these fine folks doing uh, commentary. Let, let me let me tell you about Kerry and Tommy Smash on, on commentary okay. one time. Okay. Uh, Fifty caliber Bear Brown, also a man who has never held championship gold here in WFC, but perhaps going to position himself now for a hometown heroes title match. And then one more man. He has had shots at the belt. He has before. And then there's. The big man, the man who has done everything here in WFC. Former heavyweight champion, former hometown heroes champion, former tag team champion, Freedom Rings Rumble, the very first Ryder Herring Memorial Cup tournament winner on one of the hottest days ever outside in a one day tournament in Sperry, Oklahoma. A man who is certainly making great waves for himself as well. First a viral sensation on social media, and then most recently, of course, a uh, featured player with Game Changer Wrestling. Always trending, Sam Stack. Absolutely, and he knows he, he knows how to make that work for him. I'll pitch him that T-shirt. Ha! Yeah. I'd rather see him trend than somebody else. Woo woo woo, Sam. You'll get my woo 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 woo, not that other guy. All right, let's go to Duck Davian for the official announcements for this Fatal Four. The following contest is your main event for the evening. It is a Fatal Four Way match and is scheduled for one fall. One fall! There are no count outs, no disqualifications. The only way to win is in this ring through pinfall or submission. The winner of this contest will become the number one contender for the WFC Hometown Heroes Championship. Introducing first, he hails from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is the king of Tulsa wrestling. Throughout this world, Tommy D. And introducing now the order is he hails from Iron Lake. He is the showcase, Alex Royal. Did he move? I guess so. And introducing now competitor number three. He hails from Gun Barrel, Texas. He is the stray dog.
four top quality professionals in the ring here. And uh, honestly, it is impossible for me to pick a, a person who is in the advantageous position. And a fatal four-way match, of course, always chaotic. Four competitors at the same time. And this is for a hometown heroes championship opportunity in the future. The winner number becomes the number contender. one contender. Uh, we can't take we can't take betting. Uh, the line, sorry, the, the okay. betting line is, is right. passed at this uh, point. It seems like uh, Tommy Dean. Tommy I'm Dean, and you're going to call for Tommy Dean? Tommy All right. Well, Tommy certainly seems to have put Barrett Brown in his sights here. Well, you picked the uh, unpopular choice. Apparently. Oh, and Tommy with a roundhouse kick to Alex Royal. A lot of words being exchanged. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the guys are doing the commentary for this. Uh, Sam's trying to. Oh. Yeah, it's going to take a. Uh, no good deed goes unpunished. Oh. Tommy and Sam, no strangers to each other. I'm not sure that Sam and Barrett have ever had any one-on-one -on -one encounters. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's a reason why they call him the absolute unit. <laughs> Sam now running through here, comes back, double clothesline. Sam finds himself the last man standing in the ring. And I really, man, I, ah, uh, no, 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 Well, no, no, no he's no. just, he's circling around, but Barrett in there to intercept. Well, gotta give it to Barrett Brown. He, he's never the biggest dog in the fight, but he'll take the fight to you no matter what. What is he doing? Oh! Timber and uh, okay, Sam build up speed again, but this time runs straight into a back kick from Tommy Dean. Dean now catapulted into the corner, comes off, tries for something, and it, whatever it was, it wasn't going to work. Remember when you were talking about running into people? Yeah. Uh, that, that's what Tommy Dean just did. Yeah. Sort of. He flew into to, someone. He tried to. Yeah. <laughs> Dean over the top and down. And again, Sam Stackhouse here. But again, there's no count outs in this match. Sam has got to get somebody in the ring, get them pinned, or force them to submit. And again, Sam. All right, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my prediction. Sam. Sam. Comes up short. Well, Alex didn't even get in the ring. Up. Brown now back in. Brown gonna go downstairs. He's gonna chop him down. That's his best shot. Take Sam's legs out from him. And now Sam throwing Barrett over to the side. Barrett gets the feet up as Sam charges in. Sam over the top. Not the most scientific move, but it got it done. Well, it got Sam out of the ring, but now you got to count as Sam's dog. I, I guess we'll have to see. As now, Tommy Dean re-entering the ring. Combinations going on here. And Tommy to the second row. Oh! Standing moonsault from the second row. Goes I'm for the pinfall, too. I'm 
switching back to Tom. Is this even Tom. legal? I mean, I'm not a professional better, but I feel like once you place the bet, you got to stick with the bet. You said, but I wasn't allowed to put anybody down. Okay, that's fair. No. No, that's true. So the rules. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Dean now forcing Alex Royal into the corner. Again, no disqualifications here. The referee can ask as much as he wants to, but Petter does not have to adhere to that. Alex Royal and Tommy Dean, a long time adversaries of each other. The only rule is that it has to, the pinfall or submission has to happen in the ring. Yes. And that may well be happening right here as Dean hooks the leg. Two count only. Tommy Dean attempting to take control or keep control now. Barrett Brown hopped up and is immediately knocked down. Tried to get back into this game. Sent right back out. But Sam over there starting to shake off the cobwebs. Oh. Dean now maybe going to go for that. Well, whatever he was going to go for, it didn't work. Barrett Brown, though, back in the ring. Dive and a miss there by Tommy. Big boot miss by, by Royal. And both men with their feet on the top rope. And Dean comes out victorious in that. Oh. Snapdragon suplex by Barrett Brown. Nice move. He's going to try that with I Sam, and yeah. that's no. Right. Yeah, I don't. That will perhaps, and that did at least cut Sam down to size, to a workable size. I was going to call it the move of the night until he, he tried it on Sam. If, well, if he pulled that off against Sam, you could call it the move of the decade. Oh. There's a Snapdragon on uh, Alex Royal, but a miss there. Royal with the cradle. One, two. And a straight right hand. From Barrett Brown, puts down Royal. Royal down, Stackhouse down, Tommy Dean outside the ring, presumably down. Barrett Brown standing alone, but he's got to pick, pick one. Yeah, he's got to pick one of these two, and I think the easier choice here is Alex Royal. And that's where he's going. Going up top. Barrett thrives in that upper know. environment, but uh, not quick enough as Royal going to meet him. Royal calling for the brain buster from the second rope. Oh, but Tommy Dean. Dean coming in from behind. And Dean yanking Royal off. Low bridge over goes Royal. And oh. no, he caught it. Good move there by Tommy Dean. Tommy now with his eyes on Alex Royal comes over the top down and lands. I thought maybe Royal was going to try to intercept him with a forearm, but it didn't work. Dean now, the springboard sidekick. Picks him up, hoists him. Look out. Oh! Straight into the... Uh, I think it shook the whole building. Yeah. Dean dropping Royal down now. Could Dean walk away with the number one contendership? Nope. Sam too close. Got to get uh, he's got to get Royal out to the center of the ring. Not because that's a rule, but because he's got to get him away from the other guy. There we oh, go. Oh, I think See? he heard you. Yep. Shut up! Shut your mouth! Royal, excuse me, or Dean now. Also, someone who loves that top rope environment, but can he pull off a big splash from that corner and never gets the opportunity? Barrett Brown finally sent somebody down in the corner. He's been. A lot of time getting knocked down in that corner just before. Royal now picking up Brown, but Brown oh. caught by Royal. Royal with the buckle oh. bomb onto Tommy Dean. And Royal now up and over and down. Brain Buster coming. No, we're bearing out of that. Exploder suplex into the one corner. Dean, exploder on him, on to Brown. I'm switching to Alex Roy. And I don't think you're going to get an exploder on Sam. Oh, is he going to? No. 
Sam, however, well, now he's not able to get Royal up either. Pele kick. And Sam, look out, cannonball, but nobody there. I think Sam just took himself out of this. It's like a Shakespearean drama. There's bodies everywhere. Disagree with the fans. Well, Tommy Dean has disagreed with the fans for quite a long time now. He seems to have a. He seems to. He and Barrett. Well, that didn't work well. Super kick by Barrett. Close line by Dean. Yeah, I think Sam took himself out of this. Well, it's not over yet. Well, if one person were able to execute a pin right about now, it may well. You know, referee, well, I feel it's like just instinct sometimes. You now Sam and Brown. Well, Sam will yeah. Yeah. give as well as he receives. Oh, Sam just giving an open oh, shot. Yeah. Come on. Oh, a super kick by Brown. And one from Royal as well. Not a super kick from Tommy D. Oh, look out! Triple super kick! I'm switching to Barrett. I think maybe now, well, Sam lands on his feet, is able to, to stay up, upright outside the ring, so I thought maybe he was really locked, knocked loopy. Sam making his way around. we got three men left in the ring. Well, make that two as Tommy Dean now to the outside. Brown sensing an opportunity here. Off the ropes, Brown. Oh, baseball slide, nobody home, but Tommy Dean back inside. Tommy Dean over the top! And I can hear the, the cries of pain from Sam Stackhouse. Meanwhile, Dean and Brown battling each other in the ring. Trading slaps. No sign of Sam Stackhouse anyway. I'm not sure. Now, I haven't even lost track of Alex Royal. He, he's, it's just down to Dean and Brown at the moment. Countering everything that Brown has come up with so far. Back elbow smash, but. Just keep kicking and hitting each other in the face. Oh, look at this now. Backslide. There we go. Oh, nope. Brown rolls through. Now going to try for the straight jacket pile driver. Can he get him up? Down! Oh. This could be it right now. Oh, but Dean doesn't go for the pinfall. Dean upstairs. There's Alex Royal back out. Dean with the splash. But Royal there picks him up. Brain Buster. And Alex Royal has won it. Now I could have sworn in there at one point I had Alex Royal. I feel like you called literally everyone except Alex Royal in the match. But I I I lost track as well. And as you say, no money on the line. Yeah, I feel but, like I had a bet in there somewhere on him. I, but, I just feel that way. But Alex Royal has now cemented himself as the number one contender 
for Justin Lee's Hometown Heroes Championship. Outlasting three other strong competitors.